feel like I'm in no condition to talk as I feel I'm like downloading information from the source. But <clears throat> I just wanted to mention that love and happiness, I don't know if I want to use the absolute of is, because the word is is very detrimental in a lot of situations in our language. But <clears throat> when you practice love, when you practice happiness, your mind begins to default to love and happiness during common everyday situations. And that's a really awesome feeling. And it's something that I'm getting back to and that's why I said I'm, I'm not really in a position to talk right now even though I just want to express it because I feel at this moment I'm beginning to return to the, the happiness and love that I see all the time. But a key thing is that it's a practice that unless you are a prodigy of love and peace, you're probably going to have to meditate or do some form of... Well, this battery died, and I'm just going to finish what I was saying here. I was saying that we have to... Well, from what I've found, I have had to practice love and happiness. I discovered this like three years ago when I, I began to realize that it's possible to see things in a positive uh, lens all the time, very often, maybe not all the time, but very often, to the point where you're literally reverberating happiness and love all the time. Relatively. And what I was saying was that we have to be active in being passive. So, meditation is being actively passive, right? You have to, if you're not a prodigy in, in love and happiness, right? I'm not sure anybody is. But something that we can do, obviously, is meditation or some form of allowing yourself to be and that is an overused but very good uh, metaphor for to, how to live and, and not be uh, emotional in a sense that it is going to be detrimental to your, yourself. It's not going to hurt you. So, for example, I thought of this earlier this morning. I had to take a poo really bad, and I was like, I was listening to Muji, or Mojiji, I don't know what he goes by, I'll, uh, you can search it, him, if you want. Anyways, he, uh, was saying that just because you are upset doesn't mean that you are upset, there is just an upsetness, there's just an anger within you, there's a, an unbalance of positivity and negativity. And I was thinking... I, just because I have to poop, doesn't mean that I am poop, right? Isn't that just as simple as it is, right? So you might battle that idea and be like, oh, it's different for abstract emotions, abstract emotions like happiness and pain, emotional pain. But it really isn't. I don't think it is. It's obviously slightly different because maybe not. Okay, think about this here. Going in a different direction now. This is the imaginary, right? This is where it takes me. I really didn't have much desire to talk, but now I'm, I'm talking. Okay, interesting idea here. It's turning. Survival mechanisms and biases as human beings. The title of the fucking thing, right? Pooping. We have a sensation that we have to poop. And if you don't do so, you might be constipated. You might have problems later on in the future. Therefore, we have some sort of mechanism in our body to say, yo. And, uh, think about, I was thinking about anger, too. I was thinking about when would that ever be useful. In, in our current society, I don't think it would be useful very often, if at all. I can't think of anything, any situation where anger would be useful. But, retaliation and anger kind of go hand in hand. And if you think about... In times when we are being restricted by land or by love, retaliation begins to occur in a sense that we either kill or push away the resistance 
to then be able to survive better. So, for example, someone took our land, go take them out, and we get our land. We get to survive. So, maybe those type of emotions are a primitive uh, bias in our historical cycle, right? If they are useful now, I'm curious, do you think anger or most negative emotions, do you think they are useful now? Because if so, then I'm doing something wrong in my life. Then I'm, what I'm trying to do is to bring about peace, happiness, love, uh, ener energy, passion into my life and be able to have people bounce off of it, to be able to inspire and be felt by other people in a positive way, right? You can feel someone when they come into a room. And I want to be that, that energizer bunny, that shitty, wasn't it, of uh, peace and love. So unless I am mistaken, I am trying to not be identifying myself with anger. I realize that I become upset sometimes. That's okay. But I do not go about creating a story about why I'm upset, how I'm upset. But instead, I allow it to be there, move on, be happy again. I be, right? Imaginary, it's going off track, that's okay. <laughs> Is there something wrong? in focusing on positivity, is there? Now obviously the obvious answer is, or the common answer is, no, you should be happy, right? Common answer. But I'm open to everything. And I want to live life in the right way. So, I'm curious. If you can think of anything, a negative emotion on when it's beneficial in our current society, or if you think where we are moving in a positive direction of enlightenment or becoming more of a soul rather than a human body, and you still think that there's a, a value of negative emotion, I'm curious. I'm not saying I would disagree with you because if it's something that you can prove or something that you can detail out and explain why it would be valuable, then that's awesome because then I could, I could see it too. So, again, if you do, I'm really curious, you should, you should comment, but other than that, I don't know what else to say other than looking at objects around the room and, and about to, uh, you know, just say foam roller, right? Pen. Kindle. Cannon. Computer. Corn. There's no corn in my room. <laughs>